What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteNext.com. Today we're gonna to talk about the push-up, one of the most common exercises performed in the gym. However, it's also one of the most commonly misperformed exercises. And I feel that what happens with this exercise is we don't pay it the same attention as we do, say, the bench press. And that's ironic because we're actually gonna cover both exercises side by side, creating a checklist so that you can actually see the commonalities between the two exercises and therefore hopefully understand better the cues that you're looking to integrate and make sure that you follow when you perform this exercise so you make sure you get the most out of it. You ready? So as I mentioned in the open, if you look at the two exercises, they are very much the same exercise. One is being done with a barbell and one is utilizing your own body weight as the resistance. If I were to lift my knees up onto a pair of dumbbells to try to equate the torso positioning here, you can see that the mechanics of the pushing portion of the exercise is the same. So we want to make sure that we're doing the same thing across the board, utilizing the same mechanics and focusing the same attention to get the most out of it. And we start here at the top and work our way down and that is with the head and the neck. Where do you want your head and neck to be? Well, we don't want them to do this. If you were doing a bench press, you would never try to push your head back into the bench, although that is a common flaw, as people tend to try to generate more force away from their body, they do everything they can to produce force in the opposite direction, oftentimes pushing with the back of their head. That not only creates neck strain most often, but it's also taking away from the mechanics of the exercise and how to do it properly. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that, if anything, we keep our chin down and tucked in so we prevent that from happening. Well, in the push-up, it's the same thing. We're not trying to bend our head all the way back or flex our head all the way down towards the ground, sometimes creating the illusion that our eyes, that our body is getting closer to the ground before it actually does. That's why we do that. What we want to do is keep it in neutral and maintain that position from the very first rep to the last. All right, the next thing we want to do is we want to look at the shoulders. And the most important thing you can do here is unshrug them. What do I mean? If you look at a bench press, one of the most common flaws people make is in an effort to create the tightness or the retraction that they hear we should have on the exercise, they actually pull up into this shrug. That's not what we want. As a matter of fact, we want the direct opposite. We want the shoulders together, but we also want them down. We can do that by consciously unshrugging the shoulders here. The secondary effect of this is that it's going to put the elbows in a better position as we perform the press. Why? Because as we shrug up, the clavicle is going to change its angle, dragging the scapula along with it. As those two go together, we know the relationship between it and the shoulder joint itself. You're going to change the mechanics of the shoulder joint, mostly elevating it inside the socket, creating a higher elbow angle as you go down into the press. That is not what we want, and we're going to cover that in depth as we get down here. But the most important thing you could do is start by initiating a conscious unshrugging of the shoulder. And it doesn't just apply to the bench press, obviously, it does the same same thing here in the push-up. Before you even descend into a single rep, consciously pull your shoulders down and back. We'll get into the specifics of what you want to do with your scapula next, but the most important thing you can do here before you even do anything else is unshrug those shoulders. All right, moving on to the upper back, the most important thing you can do here is create stability and tightness through here. Why? Because it is what provides the stable base from which you will press off of whether you're doing a push-up or a bench press. Let me explain. When people tell you to retract your shoulder blades, what they're trying to do is tell you to create tightness there. Why? Because the bar will start and end over this base if you're doing this exercise properly. And we're going to talk about this more when we talk about bar path later on. The fact is this, you have your most force and power when you can push off of something stable. If I were to give you one opportunity to produce your highest vertical jump ever, and I give you two chances to do it, would you rather do it off of sand or off of this hard floor here in the gym? Most likely, if you're smart enough, you'd be choosing the hard floor in this gym because you know you could generate the most force into that floor to push off in the opposite direction. The same thing here applies in both the bench press and in the push-up. So you want to make sure you consciously pull your shoulder blades together and make them tight. Create as much tightness as you can right through that shoulder girdle to realize that that is what you're going to be pushing off of and generating force in the opposite direction. If you get this right, guys, I promise you, not only will the push-up become easier, but the bench press will as well. The next part is one that actually catches some people by surprise, and that is activation of the glutes. Because we know that your body's ability to perform any exercise is infinitely made better if you can involve not just the upper body, but the lower body as well, where some of the strongest muscles in your body reside. When you're looking at a bench press here, guys, you actively want to contract your glutes. This provides additional strength and force in that opposite direction from the ground up. As I push the bar away, I could drive my feet down, creating these equal and opposite forces here to allow me to do that with more efficiency. Well, we can do the same thing here when we do the push-up. 
I want to make sure that I'm not just lazily hanging out in the push-up position, but that I'm actively contracting my glutes. The second I do this, we call this plugging the energy leaks. You create more total body tightness, you create more efficiency from the top down throughout the entire kinetic chain so that when I do a single rep, I'm not losing it and having the force dissipate from what I'm generating pushing into the floor throughout the weak spots of my body. Tightening the glutes alone will give you an instant fix and an instant plug of that common energy leak to allow you to do this exercise better. An additional benefit to not only getting your upper back tightness and your glute activation in place is you'll also fix the positioning of your thoracic spine. Why? As we tighten from below and tighten from the top, the thoracic spine will follow. We'll get proper extension will give ourselves a chance to allow the chest to get out in front as opposed to letting the shoulders get out in front. This is an important distinction to make when we're trying to press safely. We know that if the shoulders tend to dominate the movement, not only will we have an underdeveloped chest from doing the exercises, but we're also putting ourselves in a position of more likely impingement and damage in that joint over time. So by fixing the upper back and by fixing the glutes, we're actually correcting the thoracic spine positioning as an additional benefit. Okay, up to this point, all the items in our checklist were things that you could actually change or modify before you even did a single repetition. But at some point, we got to get going. And when we do, we need to make sure that we focus first and foremost on what's happening here in our elbows. When we perform the bench press, what we do not want to do is allow the elbows to travel high because we know how dangerous that can be for the safety of your shoulders, especially considering the fact that these are both exercises that you're likely to rack up lots of repetitions on over the course of your training lifetime. So what we want to do is we want to create a little bit more subacromial space by allowing our elbows to drift downward about 30 degrees off of the horizontal. Beyond that, we know that it's further reinforcing what we talked about in the very beginning, and that is to decompress those shoulders, to pull those traps down. And the third thing we know that it does is we know that it allows us to actually push with more force. If I were to ask you right now to push me away from you, the thing that you would probably do is keep your elbows in the position here. It's a natural position for your elbows to generate the most amount of force. You would not try to flare your elbows and push me from here because you just turned a chest, shoulder, and tricep movement into simply a tricep extension movement that does not have nearly the same force generation capabilities. So you want to make sure you get this right. And again, it carries over here to the push-up as well. You don't allow your elbows to drift all the way up here. The same things that were problematic for your shoulder in the bench press would be problematic here as well. Just because you're not using the same amount of weight doesn't mean that it's still not biomechanically bad for your shoulders. So get those elbows tucked down and focus on maintaining this position from the first rep to the last to not only keep those shoulders safe, but to get much more out of the exercise, whether you're doing the bench press or the push-up. Okay, so we talk about the proper performance of a bench press. We talk about the bar path being critical to that because we want an efficient movement pattern here. And we can generate that by having a straight bar path. But straight doesn't necessarily mean straight up and down. It means straight at an angle. We go from that position of power that we talked about up here with the upper back. From this position of stability, it travels down because we know that the elbows are taking us in that direction to a line lower across your chest. From there, we want to get back to that position of stability. We know if we press straight out from there, we're actually going to create much more strain and stress on the front delt than we want. We want to get it back to that position of stability, which is straight up over our shoulder blades and up over that stable base. So the bar path is going to be angled. So how do we do this on a push-up? Well, we can't move a bar in space like we can on a bench press, but what we can do is we can manipulate our body in space. So as I go down here into a rep, I want to actually allow my body to drift a little bit forward into my hands so that my hands are lined up along that lower chest line at the bottom of the repetition. From here as I press up, I simply allow my body to drift back just a little bit so that my hands come back up to a position like they started above that stable base of my shoulder blades. There's a slight rocking component to this, very, very subtle, but very important to make sure that you're maintaining those same mechanics. Nothing changes between the bench press and the push-up. You still want to have that same path, whether it be with a bar or your body, if you want to maintain efficiency and you want the greatest power output. And lastly, guys, one of the things that drives me crazy about any exercise, and that is when people bastardize the form in an effort to just perform the exercise. It's more important to do it right. So we don't want to bounce any bar off of our chest just to lift more weight. What we want to do is we want to convince ourselves that it was our muscles that did the work and not the momentum. So when you get down to the bottom of a bench press, pause. 
hold the bar against your chest for a split second and then push back from there. There's no difference here with the push-up either. And guys, there's nothing stopping you from turning this push-up into a much more difficult version of the push-up by weighting it. The fact of the matter is everything would still stay the same. When I get to the bottom, I want that brief pause because I want to know that when I initiate the ascent from that push-up that I'm doing it with the work of my muscles and not just simply bouncing off of the ground or bouncing the bar off of my chest. So there you have it guys, a complete checklist to make sure that you're not only getting the push up right, but that you're also seeing the correlation between it and the bench press so you can get all of them right. Guys, the mechanics of every exercise you do are important. The details matter. If you're looking for a program that puts the science back in strength, that realizes that everything you do in the gym matters and you need to pay attention to it, then head over to athletics.com and get one of our Athletics programs. In the meantime, if you found the video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know also what I'm going to cover. I'll do my best to do that for you in the days and weeks ahead. And finally, guys, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss a video when we do it. All right, guys, I'll see you soon.